Up on your split screen, it's the 400 horsepower Ford Explorer ST and the 360 horsepower Dodge Durango RT. And if you're after an SUV with enough torque for an on-demand facelift that's ready to tow your toys and to do double duty as a family hauler hot rod, one of these two will definitely do the trick, but how much roomier is that Explorer? How much harder will that Hemi hit your gas budget? And what are the most significant differences in their physical size? That's all coming up, and a lot more too, but first let's size these machines up, check out some review and road test highlights from the archives, and give you a few tips before buying secondhand to make sure you have a good experience. By the way, we're covering the current or slightly used Dodge Durango RT models, and the current generation Ford Explorer ST up through model year 2024 in this case. These are two high-performing SUVs, so let's start with some stats. The Explorer ST gets a 3.0-liter V6 with twin-turbo for 400 horsepower and 415 pounds of torque, and the Durango RT runs the proven 5.7-liter Hemi V8 with 360 horsepower and 390 pounds of torque. Towing capacity is 7,200 pounds for the Durango RT. That climbs to 8,700 if you opt for a model with a tow-and-go package. In the Explorer ST, towing capacity tops out at 5,600 pounds, making the Durango the right choice if you've got to frequently move heavy loads. Just remember that towing capacity can vary by trim grade and equipped engine, so always check with your owner's manual before hooking up a trailer. So for reference, not a very subtle exhaust system on here. Let me give you a little cold start. Your neighbors will definitely know when you're leaving for work. On physical size, the Durango is 2 inches longer than the Explorer, that's 5.3 centimeters if you like, a difference in length of about 1%. The Explorer is 3.1 inches wider than the Durango, that's 8 centimeters if you like, and a 3.9% advantage in width for the Ford Explorer. But the Durango stands about 2.2 inches or 5.6 centimeters taller, so the Durango rides 3.1% taller than the Explorer. And the wheelbase and ground clearance figures for both of these vehicles is separated by less than half an inch. So that's how they stack up on size, but how about space on board? Well, the Explorer wins it for front seat headroom by nearly an inch, or 2.1 centimeters, that's 2% more front seat headroom in the Explorer than in the Durango. The rear headroom advantage in the Explorer is about the same, with a 1.7% advantage versus the Durango in second row headroom. The Explorer has significantly more front legroom by the better part of 3 inches, or nearly 7 centimeters. That's 6.6% more front legroom in the Explorer. The Explorer maintains the lead in second row legroom too, but now by less than half an inch more than the Durango. And remember earlier when we noted how much wider the Explorer is than the Durango? Well, we see that in shoulder room measurements with the Explorer offering front and rear shoulder room advantages versus the Durango of 3.3 inches and 4.2 inches respectively. That's up to 7.2% more shoulder room in the Explorer. So keep that in mind for your widest passengers, strollers, dog kennels, and the like. And on that note, if you're upgrading into this hot rod Explorer from an earlier Fiesta ST or Focus ST, you're going to feel right at home really quickly with the way that this drives. So just how do these two engines use your gas dollars? It's hard to beat the sound signature of that Hemi V8. I just love how responsive and animated and alive the sound is in terms of how it responds and changes with your throttle inputs. And that just helps this thing to put on an even better show for it. But it is not quiet and it is not subtle. We're in sport mode here. Let me see if I can give you a little demonstration. Crack the window a bit so you can hear it. That's a good sound. But you will be paying for the sound effects of the pumps, and I've got the dollars and cents math to show you by exactly how much. With the Durango's 5.7 liter 360 horsepower Hemi and higher towing capacity, you'll need on average 14.1 liters of gas to drive 100 kilometers, that's just about 17 miles per gallon if you like. 
with the Explorer ST's turbocharged V6. It's 400 horsepower and on average 11.8 liters of gas to drive 100 kilometers, that's 20 miles per gallon. Most owners will run mid-grade or better gas, so assuming that costs $1.65 per liter, and assuming you drive 25,000 kilometers per year, then that's an annual gas bill of $5,800 for the Durango RT, or about $4.85 a month, and $4,300 per year for the Ford Explorer ST, that's $360 per month. That's $1,500 per year or $125 per month less fuel used on average by the Ford Explorer ST, which by the way does 0 to 60 in about 5.4 seconds, which is about a second faster than the Dodge Durango RT all-wheel drive. So when considering your fuel costs, be sure to consider your need for the Durango's higher towing capacity and those Hemi sound effects against the more fuel-efficient and powerful Explorer's engine. There's a good inch or so of dead space at the top of the brake pedal's travel. And what that means is that while these brakes are powerful and have deep reserves of stopping force, you do need a good bit of leg muscle, a good bit of pedal to get those calipers initially clamping. And so if you prefer a sportier brake pedal feel with a more hair trigger reaction, uh, that's not what you're going to find here. So here are some pointers I think you'll find useful before buying a second-hand copy of either of these machines. And depending on your budget, you should have no trouble finding either one of these in nearly new condition with plenty of remaining warranty, and plenty of add-on warranty coverage available if you like to go that route. But two things to remember here. First, before you buy an extended warranty package, be sure to consider putting that same amount of money into your savings account instead, and that way it's available if a repair is needed, and also you get to keep it if one isn't. Second, remember that you don't need to buy extended warranty packages on the spot, so don't be pressured. Take the documentation away with you and study it carefully, and make a decision when you're ready. For both of these machines, and especially if you're heading into the winter months in a northern climate, new car batteries don't tend to last like they used to, with replacements being fairly common at just two to three years old for some models. Do not underestimate the ability of a weak or dying battery to wreak electronic havoc with either of these machines. Literally, a fresh battery and healthy charging system can fend off a tremendous amount of headaches. You'll want to head to each manufacturer's website to see which, if any, recall notices apply to the model you're considering, and then contact the dealership and confirm that all of those recalls have been performed. Recalls are done free of charge to make your vehicle safer, and you'll also want to contact Dodge or Ford Customer Care to register as the new owner of the vehicle if you're buying used. This way, you'll receive any additional recall notices in a timely fashion. If you're going for the Durango, you'll want to be triple sure the infotainment system is working properly by giving it a workout and connecting all of your devices before taking delivery of the vehicle. And before buying either of these models secondhand, be sure to remove all interior floor mats and check the carpeting in its entirety for signs of dampness or moisture. You'll want to check the area beneath the cargo hold for signs of water, rust, or dampness too. Soggy carpeting or cargo area floors commonly result from a sunroof leak, which is always going to be a bad time. If you notice any unwanted moisture, you're best to move to another unit, and if you think any of the information we just covered will lead you towards a more informed purchase decision between one of these machines or the other, then be sure to leave me a like if you're watching on YouTube, and we'll see you in the next video.